What exactly is this unforgivable sin that Jesus talks about? And is it possible that you could have committed it, maybe even without knowing? That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. So unfortunately, every so often, I will meet a Christian or I'll get an email or I'll see a comment on one of my videos from someone who is just so distraught, they're so tortured, they're so worried that they may have committed some sin that they absolutely cannot be forgiven for. And this idea comes from Jesus a statement in three of the four Gospels where he says, but anyone who speaks a word against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven either in this world or in the world to come. So I'm so excited about this video. This is going to be a good one because it's going to further demonstrate what I keep trying to show you guys, which is the importance of paying attention to context. So in order to answer this question, we're going to look at three things. Number one, who was Jesus talking to in this passage of scripture? Number two, exactly what what did he say and what did he not say? And then finally, what exactly does this mean for us as believers today? Okay, question number one, who exactly was Jesus talking to? It is super important to understand that Jesus was not talking to a group of disciples or followers or those who believe in him, nor was he talking to a crowd of people who could have possibly been made up of believers and non-believers. He was specifically talking to a group of non-believing Pharisees. Beginning in Matthew chapter 12, we first see Jesus' disciples picking grain on the Sabbath day, and the Pharisees come and say this, look, your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. In verse 9, Jesus comes across this man who has a deformed hand, and Jesus heals this man, but it happens to be on the Sabbath day. And now this same highly religious group of Pharisees comes and accuses Jesus of this. It says here, does the law permit a person to work by healing on the Sabbath, they were hoping he would say yes so they could bring charges against him. So after healing this man with the deformed hand, notice this unrelieving group of Pharisees in verse 14 called a meeting to plot how to kill Jesus. And then later on in this chapter, Jesus heals a man who is demon possessed and blind. And this same unbelieving group of Pharisees accused Jesus once again. It says here in verse 24, but when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Now, continuing in verse 30, I want you to notice how Jesus describes the people that he's actually talking to. Two, it says here, anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Okay, stay with me, we're going somewhere, because later in verse 34, Jesus describes them again saying this. He says, you brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? So the context here is super important because it shows us that Jesus is talking to a group of unbelieving Pharisees who number one, are ready to kill him. Number two, attribute his work to that of a demon. Number three, oppose him. Number four, are working against him. They are evil men. They are a brood of snakes. And none of this language is how Jesus describes those who are following him, those who believe in him. So to be clear, Jesus is specifically addressing unbelievers, not believers. The second question that we want to ask and answer is what exactly did Jesus say here and what did he not say? Well, notice it says here in verse 31, so I tell you every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven. So very clearly Jesus says that every single sin that you could commit and I could commit, including blasphemy, can be forgiven. So right away we see that there is absolutely no sin that is excluded here. He goes on to say, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit which will never be forgiven. Notice here what he did not say. He did not say every sin except murder, every sin except adultery, every sin except suicide, which some people believe is the unforgivable sin. If Jesus wanted to say that suicide was the unforgivable sin, he would have said it in this text. There is nothing in this text about suicide. And because suicide has absolutely nothing to do with blaspheming or speaking against the Holy Spirit, that cannot be considered the unforgivable sin. Verse 32, it says anyone who speaks 
speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. So now Jesus adds along and says, hey, even if you speak against me, even if you blaspheme me, you can still be forgiven. As a matter of fact, even the great apostle Paul described himself in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 13 and 14 as a former blasphemer. So it is possible that an unbeliever can speak a word against God or maybe use Jesus' name in vain and still repent of that sin and still possibly be forgiven. And now we come to the most controversial part, which says, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, even in this world or in the world to come. Now, what I believe and what many scholars believe this is talking about is, notice the context. He's talking to a group of people who are attributing his work to that of a demon. They are calling Jesus' ability to heal and saying that you are healing in the power of Satan or in the power of a demonic spirit. So we know that Jesus Christ throughout his ministry was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so basically what they're doing is they are rejecting the power of the Holy Spirit working through Jesus Christ, basically rejecting that he is deity, that he is truly the son of God. And in doing so, they are basically rejecting Jesus' invitation to salvation. So that is what I believe it means to blaspheme or speak a word against the Holy Spirit. It is to attribute the Holy Spirit's work through Jesus Christ to that of a devil, which is basically rejecting that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, so the third question is, what exactly does this mean for us today? Well, first of all, we know that there is no sin that you and I could possibly commit that Jesus Christ would not forgive us for, because if it did, it would contradict other verses in the Bible, such as 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, which says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if this is the promise that God gives, us and we believe that it is impossible for God to contradict himself in his word, then that means, my friend, that there is no sin that you could possibly commit that God would not forgive. And then finally, if you are watching this video and you're possibly worried that maybe, just maybe, you have committed the unforgivable sin, well, let me just say, first of all, we clearly see from this text that it is not a sin that you could commit unconsciously or unintentionally. This was a conscious, willful rejection of Jesus Christ as deity and and Jesus was specifically once again talking to a group of non-believers, not believers. And then second of all, if you are the least bit worried that you may have committed this sin, that right there is proof that you probably didn't because those who would commit this sin wouldn't care about the consequences or the results because they're already not saved. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe, check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.